so many times of walking into a room when I was pregnant with literally no idea why I went in there or what I was supposed to do. Let's talk about pregnancy brain today. What do the studies show about what happens to our brain during pregnancy and how it affects us both during pregnancy and after baby is born? And yes, I am someone who loves to dive into the studies and I love pouring through information like this about how our bodies change during pregnancy. First off, tell us down in the comments, what are you noticing about your brain during pregnancy? Let's do our own little study here at the Pregnancy Nurse. Okay, what do these studies show about pregnancy brain changes? First off, it shows a decrease in the gray matter of your brain. Now, this really means that things are tightening up more and they show that it's in areas where you're learning social signals. So this might be to figure out if your baby needs to eat or changed or things like that. So you're learning better social cues during pregnancy, which of course is meant to help that baby survive once it's out. So I almost like to look at it as like your brain is tightening up, like you're doing a workout and it's getting tighter rather than just losing your brain, which I, it may have felt like I was losing my brain a time or two while I was pregnant. And the other thing is it might help you also be more alert to your surroundings. So let's, let's say you're the mom back in the caveman time. You want to be aware if there's a bear or a lion or whatever in your campground, you want to be able to both look at your baby and understand what they need, but also be aware of the surroundings conditions so that we can help that baby to survive. Now your hippocampus, which deals with memory also shrinks. And the gray matter changes actually stay, but that hippocampus returns to its original size within two years after pregnancy. So hopefully those memory issues are going to resolve. Although as a mom of 25 year old, I don't know. I, I don't even remember what I was like before I had kids. So interesting, I read another study where they took MRIs of people who had both had babies and hadn't had babies and within six years, and they were able to confidently predict like 91% by just looking at their brain scans as to who had had a baby and who hadn't had a baby. That is how much it is on a brain scan. There was a study that showed a decrease in cognitive function between pregnant women and those who are not pregnant. I don't think this is a huge surprise for any of us. And it was most distinct in the third trimester, although some women say that it happens in the first trimester or second. Although they found that it was the worst early on the postpartum period, although I would say, you know, is that due to a lack of sleep or hormones on our body? I think that one's hard to differentiate there. Another study showed that these brain changes may actually be reinforced in our gray matter, helping it to tighten up after baby is born as we respond to their social cues once we're taking care of them as a mom. Now your brain is gonna be required to make all sorts of different choices in labor. I actually have some insider tips for the labor room. I'm gonna put the link down below, it's totally free. Now what causes all of this? They, they are not exactly sure. Obviously there's hormonal changes, there's blood supply changes. There is also often a lack of sleep doing just from being uncomfortable or needing to pee all the time. So a lack of sleep could you know be part of all of this, especially in postpartum. Now, how does this manifest as in the studies? Forgetfulness, difficulty concentrating, and kind of just a lack of focus. Again, if this is you, tell us in the comments. I think it'd be fun to have a discussion down there. Now, what are some of the other symptoms? Again, it's walking in that room and having no idea why you even went in there. And some of it may also be feeling things more strongly. You're watching a commercial and you start to tear up. That could be your brain tightening up, enhancing your social cues and giving you an emotion to again, save this baby that you're gonna have when it's born. I mean, don't even get me with a Hallmark movie when I'm pregnant. Am I the only one? <laughs> and I love that you're here learning this. I think I felt so seen when I was looking at these studies. And I think this is a great one to send to your partner. And I think getting prepared and helping your partner to both understand pregnancy, labor, birth, and postpartum can be such a big win. If you're looking for a way to get prepared with your partner, I have a class that I recommend. I'm gonna put the link down below. Of course, how long is this gonna last? As I said before, the studies show up to about two years and then the hippocampus returns, but the gray matter stays tightened up because it's a new skill that we've learned. Now, all of these studies brought up a few different questions for me. If you have other questions, tell me in the comments. Maybe I can make a follow-up video to this. 
First off, if a birth parent were to give a baby up for adoption, I would be interested to see how their brain changes. Again, some of these we wouldn't be appropriate at all to study, but it's just questions that I had as I was reading these studies. Those who experience a stillbirth, how does their brain change after they've had a stillbirth? And for those people who are able to afford like a night nurse and who are able to like get back to a normal pattern of sleep, how does their brain change if we take sleep deprivation out of the equation? And what types of changes do we see throughout our experience as a mom? You know, I'm in that stage with adult kids where I'm releasing them into the wild. Does my brain change again at this point in time? So how do we cope with this crazy pregnancy brain? I'm gonna give you a few tips. First off, you might wanna just practice some mindful meditation. I'm not talking hours a day, but doing some time to just clear your brain of all the thoughts that are going on can be really helpful. Make sure that you're fueling your brain with all the nutritious foods that you can to make sure that you're giving your body what it needs so that it can help you maintain peak status. Even if your whole life you've just been able to remember what you're doing, it might be the time to make to-do lists so that you don't have to keep all of those things in your brain. You can focus more on one thing. And in that same realm, maybe try not to multitask as much. Again, a problem for me as a mom for sure, but the more we can focus on one task at a time, I think this will end up being easier. Take breaks, ask for help, take some things off of your plate if you're finding that it's just overwhelming you. And make sure that you're doing those self-care activities that you find helpful, be it take a bath, do a Sudoku, whatever you're doing that really helps to fuel up your happiness pump. And personally, I take pregnancy brain as a badge of honor. Maybe I forget things now and then, but you know, I did it to help this baby survive. Now the problem is, as we get towards the end of our pregnancy, we start to have to make more choices and really use our brain. And that can be really difficult. I have a whole video on making choices during labor. I'm gonna put the link up above and down below so that you guys can check it out. Thanks for joining us here on The Pregnancy Nurse, where we get you prepared, not scared, for your upcoming hospital birth. Ha, 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 ha.